Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And this is the first time you've ever checked out a Nintendo Prime video and you're into Nintendo news, discussion, uh, opinions, and obviously debate. You guys should uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, drop a like, leave a comment. In fact, today we're going to have a couple interesting topics here to talk about. Thanks to industry veteran, industry, you can call him, I guess, an insider if you want, journalist, someone who does put his name in front of everything. He isn't hiding, he will answer if you attempt to contact him, Mr. Jeffrey Grubb. Jeff Grubb, uh, who works for a number of, uh, of actual outlets at this point, from Giant Bomb and Venture Beat, and I don't even know. Honestly, keep track of everything that he's doing. It can be a bit difficult unless you are just happen to be a Jeff Grubb mega fan, which, yes, there are Jeff Grubb mega fans out there. Uh, for a while, I was sort of one of them, but you know, I, I got a lot of things I got to follow. I got a lot of things I got to do. I got people I got to take care of around my house. So, you know, I don't always get to follow everybody the way that I wish that I could, but it doesn't really matter because what does matter are things that he has been bringing up last week in particular. Uh, things that pertain to the Nintendo 2022 Switch lineup. Now, these are things that he says he thinks are going to happen. He doesn't tell you, and this is where you got to be clarified, and, and, and sometimes there's been a bad clarification about this in the past. Jeff Grubb, while he has inside information, he's very careful to tell you, this is what my sources are saying versus this is what I think will happen. Now, he does base his opinions on what he think will happen from those sources. However, there is a difference. So it's kind of like if I told you, hey, I know somebody at GameStop that said this game is going to drop on this date. That is me telling you news based on information I have from a say retail friend. Versus me saying, based on that news, I think this game is going to sell 50 million copies. I have no reason to think that. It's just, hey, because of this release date, I'm going to just start speculating away. So take what th this is here with a grain of salt. Take it as, don't, don't even call it a rumor. More of a, he is setting the table of expectations based on things he has heard, but not things that he, you know, is hearing. It will for sure happen on this day. But it's important that we preface this because... People are going to get really hyped, and I don't blame you because the games we're about to talk about are some of the most hyped games that there could be that's not currently on the slate. And first off, he starts off with Metroid Prime. Now, look, the Metroid Prime trilogy is something that we've talked about for a number of years, a supposed remake, HD redoing. Uh, and then last year, the rumor sort of shifted thanks to Emily Rogers and others that said, hey, they never were really doing the Metroid Prime trilogy per se. They were working on games individually, starting with Metroid Prime, and yes, giving it an HD remake, but a remake. There was a lot more work put into this than just a simple remaster, uh, and yeah, that's why it's taken so long, and supposedly it's done, and it's just sitting there for Nintendo to release whenever they feel like it. I don't know who did it. I don't know if it was you know, Retro Studios, but what I do know is that this is a supposed game can come out at any time, and after Metroid Dread last year, it would make sense to continue some of that Metroid hype in 2022, especially since Metroid Prime 4 just feels like it's a long ways away. And according to Jeff Grubb, he thinks this remake is going to actually be dropping in early November, which... Could make a lot of sense. You got Pokemon likely coming in November, and that will be later in the month, and you can kick it off with Metroid Prime Remake. I think that this would actually be a nice combination, and obviously they released, you know, Metroid Prime basically during last year's holiday period, so why not, you know, Metroid Prime, Metroid Dread during last year's uh, holiday period, and why not release Metroid Prime HD this year? I, I'm To me, it, it sort of just makes a lot of sense, uh, but we'll see. I, I think it also kind of depends on when Metroid Prime 4 is going to come, because right now I'm really doubting that Metroid Prime 4 even comes to Switch in the first place, or if it does, it'll be a, a, a cross-generation title. I I know, we don't want to think that because Metro Prime 4 was announced back in 2017. How could it not come out on Switch? Uh, or, you know, I don't know. It, we'll see what happens, right? We just haven't heard anything from the game. I think I think I am allowed to be skeptical on Metro Prime 4 when we haven't actually heard anything in such a long time. But that's neither here nor there because the Metro Prime remake would be fantastic. It is an amazing game. 
came out back on the GameCube, is re-released on the Wii with motion controls. I just gotta say, it's an amazing game. It holds up to this day. I even think the visual style somehow over the years has held up. And, uh, you know, just HD in it alone would be impressive to me. But you know what? Hey, if they're going to go be above and beyond, that's cool. Uh, I'll gladly have that paired in this holiday. I, I got no problem with that. It wouldn't be a game that they're looking at to be like this mega 10 plus million seller, but it could fill the void. It could sell easily three to five million. And uh, I, I think that could be good enough for Nintendo, especially since Rumor has it, anyways, reports have it, that Nintendo's sales are down 10% over expectations because of supply chain issues. And if those supply chain issues are going to be cleaned up for this holiday, they might want even more games to push holiday sales. So, yeah, I, I would love to see this, and I really hope, in this case, Jeff is correct. Now, some other games that Jeff Grubb decided to open his trap about are back in the news. And these games are ones that... We are beloved among Switch fans, beloved among Nintendo fans, and beloved among Zelda fans. With Breath of the Wild 2 being pushed to 2023, hey, could Nintendo have something Zelda coming this year as they have for every single year in recent history? Well, Jeff Grubb actually had something to say about this, and here are the exact quotes. And keep in mind, he's talking about Nintendo here. They, aka Nintendo, want to have a Zelda game every year and they have been holding on to this why wouldn't they just put it out there this year and if they don't put it out or some other zelda thing this year again this or something else instead of just waiting for breath of the wild 2 i won't understand it i think that this game the wind waker and twilight princess hd bundle as much as it's a joke as it was in the mega 64 video i do believe it actually comes out this October. Now, look, he's been talking about this, obviously, dating back to the Zelda 35th anniversary last year when he thought these games would come out. And he wasn't just saying that he thought these games would come out back then. He stated that he had his own sources, that the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD are done. They're already ported and ready to go on Switch. It's just a guessing game for when Nintendo is going to release them. And I I honestly can find that believable given how many other Wii U ports we have seen. How could these ones not have been done? And what is Nintendo waiting for? I think the bigger question is, would they really bundle them together when they sold Skyward Sword HD on its own? And each of these games were sold individually on their own for $60 again when they went HD. So I would like to see them bundled together. I think that would be good on Nintendo to do that. Give us incredible value. Yeah, maybe it looks like, you know, make Skyward Sword HD look like maybe it wasn't as great of a value last year at $60. But you know what? That's in the past. And I don't think Skyward Sword HD, no offense, is getting that long tail of sales. I, I don't really believe it's sitting there on store shelves right now selling in the multi-millions right this second. I think anyone who wanted to buy Skyward Sword HD pretty much already bought Skyward Sword HD. So I can see where they bundled this together uh, and it, it could end up being doing incredible. And October, I, it makes a lot of sense. You know, they, they could pair, you know, a, a dual release in that month. I, I think you, you could hit Bayonetta 3 later in the month, do Wind Waker and Twilight Princess early in the month. I mean, obviously there's still August where we don't have anything technically announced yet. Yeah, maybe Jeff Grubb's got some thoughts on that. But the point is, this actually would make a lot of sense to come out this year. If it's already done, it's simple and easy for Nintendo or the drop. It had been widely speculated that Nintendo was holding on to these games in case Breath of the Wild 2 did get delayed out of 2022. And hey, that did actually happen. So it would make a lot of sense to drop them. I, I do wonder about October me maybe being a little bit too close to spring of 2023. Not that I think the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD are actually going to impact sales of Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, but Breath of the Wild 2 could actually impact sales of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD unless they think it's going to be like a Skyward Sword situation where, yeah, you get a few months to take advantage of the sales and then people won't care. I don't know. I would like to think these games are a bit more beloved than Skyward Sword and could have a longer tail of sales. And maybe Breath of the Wild 2 ends up boosting sales of these games. Maybe references from these games being possibly present in Breath of the Wild 2 could help. But hey, you know, he's just throwing it out there as an expectation um 
Again, he's had sources that have told him that these things exist from the Prime remake to the Windmaker HD and Twilight Princess HD being ready. His sources are saying these things have been ready and Nintendo is literally just deciding when they want to slot things in, whether it's this year, next year, or God forbid, Nintendo just decides to scrap it even though the work's been done. Again, this is all according to Jeff Grubb and uh, love you, Jeffy. <laughs> uh, also, you know, big shout out to RGT. 85 as well uh some people might note that he actually talked about this before i did because hey i took a day off yesterday uh because i'm allowed days off everyone like the q a yesterday that went up that was actually recorded back on friday and fully edited on uh saturday morning so that i i literally did not you know do any in the YouTube work yesterday so hey shout out to rgt85 for uh being more on top of this than me well, you know, that's that's what happens when uh, you're competing with a guy who everyone says I look like. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He's, he's a nice guy. He might he might light his chest on fire. And then he did it on Spawncast. And now if his video on this, screw it, I'll link to his video. Go drop a like on his video because if it gets to 10,000 likes, he'll light his chest on fire on his own channel. You know, because Spawncast apparently is more important to him than his own fans. That's a kind of an interesting revelation. I'd like to ask you about that. How about that sometime, Sean? Huh? Anyways, uh, I am Nathaniel Robojaz from Nintendo Prime. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you in that next video.